everybody, I'm Jeff Kelly, Big Data Analyst here for Wikibon. We're at Wikibon World Headquarters uh, on theCUBE. Uh, so earlier this month, IBM released a slew of big data products and technologies. Among them was a new uh, offering or a new member of the Pure Systems family called Pure Data System for Hadoop. Uh, today we're joined by IBM's Tim Vincent uh, we're to talk about those releases and uh, specifically and of course uh, also about IBM's overall approach to bringing big data to the enterprise. Uh, Tim is an IBM fellow as well as vice president and CTO of the information management of information management inside IBM software group. Uh, Tim joins us today by phone from his office. Thanks so much for joining us today, Tim. Well, thanks, Jeff. I look forward to the conversation today. Great. So why don't you help us kind of just set the table first off. What is Pure Data System for Hadoop? Um, and can you talk a little bit about your role in kind of developing the new system? The Pure, the Pure Data System for Hadoop is just following along in the overall philosophy of what we've got with these Pure Data Systems. And, and the philosophy is to really try to get to the point where we can provide um, end users with a, 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 an integrated system that really allows them to get to the point where they're spending their time on actually building out the business insights and the actual technology that they want to build on top of Hadoop that's driving value for them versus spending their time on actually engineering the system, trying to acquire all the parts, bring all the parts together, engineering and designing the architecture of how to build a system, installing the software and, and getting to the point where they can actually do the, the former. Um, we, we've actually had customers you know, we've talked to who are spending weeks of time doing these activities. So you, you know, thinking through what they want the, the architecture to look like, how do they get all the software installed, which switches are they going to use, how they're going to build the systems out. And we, we've got to the point where we had one customer, we had them up and going to the, to the point where they are actually low data ready within under two hours. So the, the, the goal here is really to get um, a system on the floor so the customers can get to the point where they're building the logic they want to build out versus trying to get the system stood up and running. Right, that's really in line with uh, what you and I discussed uh, last fall when we were at Information On Demand. Um, the idea that a lot of IT projects take a lot longer than uh, originally projected. Uh, and of course, a lot of that time is spent, as you mentioned, just kind of setting up the system. Um, so if you can kind of dive into some specifics here, how does Pure Data System for Hadoop actually go, go about accomplishing uh, the goal of minimizing that time uh, and minimizing those kind of setup uh, challenges so that really you can, as an enterprise, can get to uh, the, the value add uh, that big data provides, and that is kind of doing the analytics and, and really driving uh, data-driven decision making. Well, I, I think it's, the answer is pretty simple. Think of a system that's showing up on your floor, you power it on, you hook it up to your network, and at that point in time, you set up security policies, et cetera. But at that point in time, you're, you're ready to load data. Now contrast that with what you would have to do if, if you wanted to build this from scratch. So you would have to start thinking about, okay, what is the size of my system? What servers are I going to use? How am I going to lay my storage out? Am, am I going to use a SAN model? Am I going to use um, a, a storage server model? How am I going to network the systems together? How do I, you know, you've got to order all that hardware, you've got to rack it, you've got to stack it, you've got to cable it up, you've got to install Hadoop, you've got to configure that. So, so there's a lot of work that you have to go through, not only from a planning perspective, but from a design perspective and a, and a physical installation perspective. All that cost is gone, it's out of the system. But I think that's just the, the, the beginning point. And then you've got to think about the ongoing management of the system. You've got to think about, okay, uh, the reality is you are going to install software patches. You are going to install firmware patches. How do you do that? What is the process for doing that? So the Pure Data, for, um, Pure Data Systems for Hadoop comes with a single console which gives you that consolidated view of the system. It allows you to provide a process for upgrading the software. It allows you to have a process for upgrading the firmware. But it, it, it does more than that as well. It gives you uh, monitoring capabilities, problem determination. You'd have to think about how you would build those in and make sure that your availability characteristics are designed in. And I know Hadoop's got a level of built-in availability, but you still have to think through how you're going to set up your availability model and all that is done for you. And, and, and the other aspect I think that's important here is one of Hadoop's skills. And a lot of the customers we talk to, one of the challenges they have is even though Hadoop is, is exciting and a lot of people are talking about it, actually finding the people with the skills um, who actually can understand and manage a Hadoop system is hard. So in a lot of cases, they're repurposing 
people they have. They were repurposing people who may have been running or are still running their warehouse systems. So again, as these people are trying to scale up, they don't want to have to spend all that time trying to figure out how to stand the system up. The system comes prepackaged. It's already, it's all these problems have been addressed for you. So it's really as simple as rolling something onto the floor and plugging it in versus all these other steps you have to do. Um, interesting. So how does that align with, you know, when we think about Hadoop, we, we often think about, um, you know, the scale-up model, uh, stringing together cheap commodity boxes. Uh, when, you need to, when you need to expand the cluster, you, you just kind of bring in another box. Um, do, are, there, are there scaling challenges or are there any trade-offs when you take the uh, appliance approach, as you've done with uh, Pure Data System for Hadoop, um, either in terms of being able to scale it easily uh, or being able to, or, or in terms of the cost, uh, cost-benefit analysis of, of really bringing Hadoop into your environment versus your traditional data warehouse, uh, which can get very expensive uh, when you're trying to scale to, to big data levels. Are there any trade-offs when you're uh, approaching Hadoop or, or implementing it in the form factor of uh, kind of the appliance model? So there, there's a few questions in there. So let me, let me start with the one of, okay, how do I scale the system? So, so in its current in its current incarnation, the, the system is a fixed rack configuration. So it comes at a fixed size. So effectively, the, the, the decision of scaling is in some ways being taken away from you. Um, you're buying a system at a price point that is very attractive that allows you to grow up to a specific size. And that size is, you know, still got significant amounts of data, uh, data storage in the system. So you, you can grow up to a size that's probably going to be sufficient for a lot of the enterprises. So, so that scaling problem is taken uh, taken away from you to a, to a great degree. Now, if you wanted to start with a smaller system and scale, you can, you can still do so. But I, again, you, you have to go through all these steps. Now, then you have, the other thing you talked about is the data warehouse. Now, one of the things I, I think we should get into, and it's probably a separate discussion in, in, on this call, is how and where does a Hadoop system fit into your overall enterprise architecture, and where and how and what are the impacts to your current warehouse system? So I, I see that as sort of a, a second question. Well, why don't we get into that a little bit? So how does, uh, if you're a CIO and you're looking to bring in Hadoop for uh, for your kind of the core uh, platform when it comes to big data inside your enterprise, as you mentioned, you've got enterprise data warehouses um, potentially you know, strewn throughout your, your organization. You've got other data management and database technologies. Um, how does a CIO, how should a CIO start thinking about that uh, in terms of bringing Hadoop into their environment um, without necessarily, obviously they, they don't want to rip and replace uh, their existing technology. They've invested a lot of money over uh, many years in that technology and it's often playing really mission critical roles. So what should they be thinking about from a technology perspective about bringing in Hadoop, um, whether it's in the appliance form or, or any other form, uh, when they're looking to bring big data into their environment? I, I think your, your question and the way you worded the question is, is spot on. You're hitting the key issues. And let, let, let me start with one of the things that I've seen people do, and, 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 and I think it's the wrong place to start. And we saw this originally, actually, several years ago in China, in some of the telcos in China, where the researchers were starting to play with Hadoop. And they were starting from the perspective of, can we use this technology to replace our warehouse? So a lot of customers start with this from the perspective of a, of a cost play. And they look at it and say, well, I've got cheap servers, I've got something that's open source, so the acquisition cost is theoretically free. And can I replace my warehouse? And I, I think that's the wrong place to start. I, and I think you'll find if you start looking at the cost equation, yes, maybe the acquisition cost is, uh, is initially cheaper. But as you look at the ongoing cost, I'm not sure how well that cost pay, um, works out. And also there's going to be challenges in what will work and won't work. But what we've been spending time on is how, do you can, how can you use the technology to augment what you've already got? How do you actually provide more value to the system? So, so the way we've been looking at um, rolling out big data and, and these Hadoop systems is really an augmentation of the systems you have today. And it's, the warehouse is one thing you can augment. Another area that's actually interesting from an augmentation perspective is master data management system. But, but let's start with the warehouse. So you've got a warehouse, and that warehouse could be, warehouse is, is probably a highly overused term, by the way. But let's say you've got a divisional warehouse and an EDW, and you've got a collection of consolidated marks. They could be dependent on the warehouse. They could be independent. And, and you've got business users using those warehouses today. And, and, and you'll find that the, the, the performance is either 
strong, depending on how good the architecture is, or you've got some challenges. But in, in, in any case, you've got a system that's performing to a degree. You've got workload management. You've got monitoring infra infrastructure in place. You've got ETL into that system. You maybe have got some direct streams. We've got customers who are doing things like point of sale operations directly in the warehouse. So you've got a lot of infrastructure set up there. So the question is, how can you use Hadoop to do more? So what, what we're looking at is Hadoop becomes what we're thinking of as a landing zone or an exploratory zone <clears throat> that you can think of as almost as something that can fit in front of those systems. So what we're trying to um, use this, this model for is allowing people to actually expand what they've got in the warehouse. So you could actually start doing things like um, putting some of that uh, warehouse data in into Hadoop. So let's, let's pick on, say, the transactional detail data and say, okay, I'm going to actually start putting my transactional detail data in both my warehouse and in Hadoop. But in Hadoop, I'm going to put in additional attributes, which I don't store in my warehouse today because I've not necessarily seen a valid use case for them. But I'm, I'm going to now also bring in other data. That data could be SEC filings. It could be LexisNexis report. It could be social media. It could be data from um, other sources of data. I've got my enterprise. It could be email. It could be machine data. So, so you're bringing all these different forms of data into, into this landing or exploratory zone, and then you're letting the business users actually start doing uh, more of an exploratory type of workload on them and, and or ad hoc workload. You could be building ad hoc reports, which are really looking across the superset of data that you've not really been able to query before. So, so what we see the, the system then doing is, is this capability of doing exploration, things like you may have done with a sandbox in a warehouse before, but you're going to do it in, in this location instead, in the landing zone. And, that sandboxing activity could now be sandboxing over just, again, the transactional detail from your warehouse and you're offloading some of that work from the warehouse. Or it could be sandboxing activity where you're looking at that data plus additional data or even just looking at additional data. <coughs> so we're really trying to get to the point where people are seeing this is an opportunity to do new things versus and really derive new value versus saying replacing something, which, as you pointed out, could be a very costly proposition as you start really looking at the overall operational process of actually completely ripping and replacing. So I'll stop there, Jeff, because I'm sure you've got potentially some other questions that we can we can scroll down. Well, right. Well, well, there's some really great insights in there, and one of them that, that struck me was the idea of using Hadoop really as an area to do some more um, exploratory analytics. And you mentioned maybe even a business user doing that. But of course, you know, one of the challenges with Hadoop is is it's sometimes difficult to work with the data. Uh, you've either got to know MapReduce, or or you've got to be a fairly sophisticated uh, data scientist in many cases, at least uh, in in the use cases we've been hearing about out in the market, uh, in order to 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 use Hadoop for that kind of exploratory analysis. Now, of course, you know, among some of the other announcements that IBM made, one was uh, early this month. One was uh, something called Big SQL, uh, basically allowing a SQL type interface uh, on top of data stored in Hadoop, so that business analysts and others who are, are steeped in, in SQL can actually start accessing that data. Um, and of course, you know, I understand that Big Insights really, as a platform, it builds off the core Hadoop open source uh, Hadoop dis, uh, dis, Apache distribution, but it bring in, brings in some of the other elements that IBM uh, has in their arsenal around analytics um, and visualization. So maybe, can you talk a little bit about IBM's approach to actually making it possible for business users to do that type of exploratory uh, work inside of Hadoop without having to be, you know, MapReduce experts or otherwise really sophisticated data scientists? I think that's a great question, and there was actually many questions in there. So <laughs> and let me start with your big SQL comment, because you, you hit on, I think, one of the key points. With, with SQL, you do have a large community of users who can build SQL, and more importantly, I think, you've got a large ecosystem around SQL. You've got tools such as Cognos, which you know business users can use to build reports. So it actually starts bringing a, a larger ecosystem for people to, and the business users to use. So you are correct that the business users they're not going to be the ones who are writing the math reduced jobs. They're probably not going to be the ones who are writing Hive because they don't have that skill set. But some of them do have a SQL skill, and, some, and, and more importantly, you do have um, tools which the business users are using today which can issue SQL. So that allows you to bring a broader set of skills and a broader set of capability into the system. And I, I think this is going to be a key thing going forward. And SQL, SQL is a starting point, but I think the ecosystem is, is going to be more important. And I think what's going to happen, so if, if I put my crystal ball out on the table, I think one of the key things going forward is going to be more that tool set that allows the business users to actually start 
doing things and actually doing um, and building out analytic jobs, building reports, building insights on the system without having to become a MapReduce programmer. So the same thing that has happened in the, uh, the warehouse world, I think, will happen on this big insight world. So I'll stop there, Jeff, and see if there's any direction you want to take this on. I, I know I didn't answer everything, but I figured it's best to see if there's a one direction or another you want to go with. <laughs> sure. So, um what I think maybe a good way to kind of wrap up the conversation would be to to kind of follow on that point and 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 maybe you know maybe if you could get your crystal ball out a little bit and talk about um, how you see uh, that actually developing uh, in terms of bringing more uh, capabilities uh, analytic capabilities to Hadoop for uh, business users. Do you see that? Obviously, IBM has a play there. Um, when you mentioned the ecosystem out there, there are a lot of uh, startups in this space. Um, you know, the companies uh, like IBM par partners, like Datamir, for instance, that are doing some interesting visualization on top of Hadoop. How do you see that kind of playing out? And 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 maybe if we start, you know, that the, the, if you could answer maybe from a um, from a, a ecosystem perspective, but also just generally speaking, how do you see Hadoop really evolving um, in 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 terms of being a tool for the business user? So, so let me take that in, in a slightly different way and and talk about. How what I see big data as, and, and and I'll start off with saying I don't really like the word big data, and and the reason I don't is because it it it, it means too many different things to too many different people. Um, so for example, I've gone into I've gone into customers and they said, well, we don't have a big data problem because we don't have petabytes of data. And you know, you look at it, say, well, okay, but I, I think that the, 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 what's going on in the industry is actually more than that. And other people say, well. I don't have a big data problem because I'm not really interested in all the social media stuff. I'm a financial company and all I'm doing is crunching numbers. And other people say, well, I don't necessarily want to be into big data because I don't have the skills or I don't know how to use Hadoop. And, and, and unfortunately, I think they're missing the point because what we're really trying to get to is, the, is a world where you can actually look at all the data you have available and all that data is a combination of things you already have in your structured systems and could be in your unstructured systems such as your ECM repositories, it could be data that you're generating, such as machine data, it could be m email, or it could be external data, like again, LexisNexis reports, it could be spec filings, etc. So, so I think what we want to get to is, again, where the business users, the data scientists, the knowledge workers have access to data, and it becomes more of an information supply chain management problem, starting with easy tools like what we have with Big Data Explorer that allows you to start understanding what data you have and what, the, 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 what that data looks like. Um, and I think that uh, understanding of the data is going to be an area that's going to evolve and the ecosystem around that's going to evolve where it's going to be a combination of things like Big Data Explorer and enhanced metadata repositories, for example. And, and then the next thing is, okay, how do I then start asking questions for the data and how do you provide potentially easy, simple ways to ask data ask questions, which could be natural language processing, over the data as it exists. And, and then maybe your next step is bringing it into a Hadoop system where you said, okay, I want a subset of that data. So if I got um, unstructured data, what I'm going to do is not bring all the unstructured data in there, but I may run some annotators bring in a subset of data in, and I may augment that with other data that I've got. And then the next thing is, okay, now that I've got that data into the system and coming back to the ecosystem, how do we evolve it? Because if you look at um, most, if you go back to a warehouse workload again, and you start thinking of the flow of um, a data scientist, they're going through a level of data preparation as they're bringing the data into a model, that, into a format where they can run and gen their models, or they can generate the scoring algorithm. So you start getting into um, evolving data. And as you evolve the data, you want to make sure you're keeping track of where you've been, what's the lineage of that data. So when you get to the point where you say, okay, now I've, I've got to the point where I've got a analytic algorithm. It could be a scoring algorithm, for example. And I say, now I want to bring that scoring algorithm and I want to bring that into my warehouse. And it could be a, a pure data free analytics system. How do I actually keep track of what I've done? And again, come back into the lineage of the data. What's the tooling that could go through that lineage of the data? Generate the data model I've just evolved. Build that out in your warehouse, your pure data free analytics system generate an ETL flow and actually bring that data into the system. So it really has, we, I think we have to get to the world where we're seeing this as an information supply chain management problem, where you really have to have an ecosystem that allows you to look at data, bring it into a Hadoop system, tooling on Hadoop that allows you to build out your analytics. It could be 
through things like SPSS Modeler as an example or other, other tools to build this out. But as you're building those jobs, keep track of where you've gone, where you've been. So as you get to that end game and you decide, okay, this is really important, you could decide to continue to run that job in Hadoop if, if the characteristics of the, the, and the, of the workload, the performance characteristics, the currency, the data um, is, is sufficient. Or you could say, okay, I need a very high degree of currency on my data. I have to put this into a, a system that can deal with very high demands because maybe this is a scoring algorithm that you're running as part of a customer care system, as an example. So I want to move that into my uh, Natiza system, which can, is going to give me a better SLA. So I, th I think we've got to get to the point where this entire ecosystem um, around information supply chain management becomes a reality. So I, I think Hoop is an important point, part of that, and we're going to have to get to the point where we have an ecosystem that brings all these things into play. You talked about visualization. I think that's going to be an absolutely key point in, in that in, in that view. And the visualization tooling, again, has to plug into that overall flow of, of, of what you're trying to achieve. And, and I know I said a lot, Jeff, but hopefully that all made sense. Yeah, some very good points. Um, information supply chain management, I think, is a really interesting concept uh, and one that uh, maybe has been left out of the conversation a little bit. Um, as we've focused on some of the more specific areas of big data, like Hadoop and um, maybe analytics, whereas really it's about being able to be flexible to get the right data to the right people in the right form with the right tools. And uh, some really interesting things to think about, and we could certainly continue this conversation uh, for a lot longer, but I uh, want to be sensitive to your time. So thanks, Tim Vincent, uh, IBM fellow, CTO, and VP in the Information Management Group uh, at IBM Software. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, hopefully we can have you back on and uh, continue the conversation. It was really uh, very interesting. Yeah, I'd love to get on and talk to you about Blue, our Fant Blue Acceleration technology. That would be great. Fantastic. Yeah. We'll definitely do that. So thanks so much, uh, and thanks, everybody, for watching. Okay, thank you.